Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to another Q&A. I've got a bit of paper, it says Q&A on it, which can mean that not only is this a very high-tech channel, but it's time for a Q&A. The first one, I don't actually need to look at a list because I've memorized it, is how's life? And you probably noticed that there's not actually been that many uploads on the channel compared to what we used to do. I mean, realistically, I'd say I'd like to get one up every other day, but it's not really been happening. But the good news is we've got things like Computex coming up, which should hopefully get me um, back in the swing of things even more. We'll be producing a video every day while we're out there. And then when I come back, hopefully we'll be back in the swing of things and we'll be getting a video up every 48 hours or as close as uh, I can get to that. When buying a PC, what is the most important component? Well, this is a little bit of a vague one, I guess, because it depends what you're gonna be using your PC for. Are you gonna be doing gaming? In which case you probably need a really good graphics card and then a CPU that can keep up with it. Are you going for a more general use computer? In which case an SSD is probably gonna be your primary thing that you'll see a big gain from. Or are you gonna be doing rendering or something that requires a decent CPU? My bit of advice really here is to just do a bit of background knowledge on what the different components are, how they work, and more importantly, what you're going to be using your PC for, and then buying the appropriate components that will actually suit your sort of workflow. What were the specs of your first ever PC? Now, this one is a bit of a funny one because it actually didn't have a graphics card. And I know what you're thinking, well, surely you wasn't playing any games. Well, I was, I have you know. I was getting about 20 frames a second uh, low settings, thank you very much. So you know, very playable. And the reason for this is because I had around about 600 pounds to spend. And I remember actually loving so much choosing out the parts for my first PC. I'd actually gone over to a friend's house and this is when Nvidia's 3D Vision first came in. And I just started using that and thought, this is amazing, uh, I need this. And so I started saving up money just for a basic PC. It had an i5 2500K processor. It had an appropriate motherboard. Was it Z67 or something like that? I forget. Then I worked for about five weeks in Sainsbury's on the checkouts and the tills, earning something like six pound an hour or something like that. And then I spent all of that on a GTX 680 when that came out a few months later. So yes, it was probably a little bit unnecessary, but I would do it again. So if anyone ever says to me, you don't know what it's like to save up uh, a load of money and buy all these computer components, then to be honest with you, that's just incorrect. But that actually leads us quite nicely into the next question, which reads, how do you get all of the electronics that you review? And this does vary a little bit. Some stuff I will buy myself, whereas these days, most stuff actually gets sent from the manufacturers. And a lot of the time, most of the time really it's loaned out, so things like the mini PC that Asus sent me behind me, and then the monitor from ViewSonic, that's loaned out for a few weeks, then that goes back. Whereas the lower ticket items, things like the keyboards, mice, peripherals, headsets, all of those things, I normally do get to keep. And then there's some gray area stuff where things will be loaned out and then they never ask for them back. So that's quite often things like motherboards, um, sometimes graphics cards, if I'm going to be doing PC builds, then they just sort of sit around here um, in different computers before I use them, but then likewise, sometimes you'll get an email that will ask for them back. So it varies quite a lot, but pretty much the answer to your question is, it depends. Now this is a question I actually really like and I think is a very good one. It says, are benchmarks a good way to judge your device? And it does depend on the device. So, for example, I have here my Pixel 2. It's my favorite smartphone. I think someone else asked that question. And I personally would never, ever look at a benchmark. I know the specs of the phone. I know that pretty much all of them are going to perform similarly. But because the software and the skins are so different, that has way more of an impact than a benchmark could ever tell me. And I'd much rather just look at reviews in general rather than looking at benchmarks. But when we're talking about PCs and gaming, then benchmarks are very, very much essential as they tell you exactly the sort of performance you're gonna get, what resolution, what frame rate, all of that good stuff. But even they are not perfect because for example, um, I think the last PC I did, the Ryzen build, it showed Fortnite getting a very slightly lower FPS score at each resolution than PUBG. But in actual fact, it couldn't be further from the truth because PUBG, 
Um, while it's perfectly playable, as we all know, it's very unoptimized and it's a bit stuttery, very teary, just not that great. Whereas Fortnite pretty much ran like butter in comparison, much smoother, much better experience. But generally speaking, in terms of PCs and PC gaming, benchmarks do pretty much tell the complete story. Oh, are we done? I didn't realize. I've drawn little arrows, look. I thought we were at the bottom. I'm going mad. I do this way too often, if you haven't noticed. It's getting near summer. This room gets very hot. I've got some sort of illness coming on. My voice is going. And it's probably time for me to leave. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. You can also check out some other videos at the links below. How's he gone yet? How's he gone? I think he has, so I can tell you the truth. I don't really like his channel, to be honest with you, I prefer the tech chap.